Well, some of this footage is going to be as of now, which the compressor is up and running, and um, we're going to take a look at the valves real quick, because some of the footage that I had of actually servicing these valves, cleaning them up, uh, got lost or actually wasn't centered properly in the camera. You can get the manuals for these online from the Kellogg American website, freely downloadable. They contain the torque specs for all of this stuff. Um, if you need parts, I had to get an unloader assembly for this, which we'll have a video coming out soon on that too. Um, replacing that unloader assembly, I got that from Master Tool Repair. They seemed like really good people to work with, had a good price on shipping and everything. And I got the complete unloader assembly. Uh, I got the whole thing for about 40 bucks shipped. Each of these covers is access to the valves. Now, I didn't know that when I first got this compressor. You can service the valves without disrupting the head gasket. Now, I pulled the head on mine too, and I'm going to show you that footage, but you have absolutely no need whatsoever to pull the head if all you want to do is the valves. This one, obviously, that has the unloader, you're going to have to do um, a little bit more because you're going to have to disconnect this hose. So just for today's sake, we're just going to pull the two low pressure valves because they're basically all the same. These two are slightly bigger, but as far as the orientation, the function of them, you'll understand it once you see them. Now, the big reason that I decided I needed to service my valves was because when the compressor built up pressure, you could hear and feel air leaking out of the air filter. So that meant that the valves were not sealing. You might be able to do this with your hands, but chances are you're gonna need a couple screwdrivers on either side and very gently pry this up. Now since I just had these off, I put just a little bit of oil around this O-ring so that it would come back off if I ever needed to. So that one just pops off and we'll do the same thing over here. See how this seals, it just has an O-ring in a groove on this top plate. So down in there, there's these retaining rings on each of them. Try not to get into the light too much. So you pick this retaining ring up out. And where am I here? So there's our retaining ring. Then our actual valve that's down here. You notice how there's a nut on each one. It's very important when you're reassembling. The nut always goes up, otherwise it would contact the piston. And Now the valve comes out, and we'll take a look. We'll pop them apart, or at least one of them apart. And then there's a little copper seal ring down in there too. Now your copper seal rings may be stuck to the valves like mine were. Um, seal rings go in between the valve and the head. So we'll do the same thing here. Pull out our retaining ring. Pull out our valve. Our little copper sealing washer. Down in this valve, this is the outlet of the high pressure side. Notice all the rust that's down in there is really bad. The other ones are kind of oily. The inlet for the low pressure is really dirty. So they're not horrible, but that outlet valve just strikes me as that is not sealing, which means the air goes in from here, out of here, into here, and then it comes out of here. And rather than the valve closing and it continue pushing, it's just sucking air back in through there. Now this was rather difficult to get apart, especially the first time. What I ended up having to do was put the Allen wrench in the one side and use a cordless impact on the other side just to kind of give it a little rat-a-tat and come apart. Now this time I've pre-loosened it and then you'll get to see all the different parts. Now Let's take them off one at a time. I said one at a time. 
just want to stick together. Okay, so this right here is kind of the base of the whole thing. And this is what the valves seat to. This edge right here and this edge right here are where your valve um, seals on. So those have to be spotless, clean, and smooth most of all. Um, then the next piece that you have is your valve itself. But what I did when I serviced these was just basically wiped them off, used some brake clean, inspected everything. The one that was really rusty, what I did was took a brass uh, wire brush and cleaned it up. It was rather time consuming, but cleaned it up nice. And you'll see this one looks to be in really pretty good shape. Um, there's no real strange wear or anything. So we'll set that there. Then our next piece that we have is a little spring. Now this goes with the wider end toward this piece. This narrow end goes on our little valve disc there. So then that is our actual piece there. And so assembling is uh, basically the reverse. Now you notice this one has a tapered edge on here. Um, that's because that goes in that way. The other side valve, this side has the taper on. So the intake and exhaust valves are obviously distinguishable. I did them one at a time so that I didn't mix up any parts. Now one other thing that I will mention, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but if you look down in each of the valve holes, you can see the piston and you can look, now this one's all the way at the top, so you can't really see it that great, but you could see the piston and inspect the cylinder walls or at least some of them to see if there's any huge dramatic amount of wear um, that would indicate a need of a rebuild. But um, in this case, you can't really see it that good. I just wanted to point out that you can do a lot of inspection on these without having to actually replace any gaskets at all. They're, they're designed to be fixed. Each of these, remember the nut goes up, so this one is the inlet valve. You can also tell that because if the valve opens, it's going to be coming down. So that one is going to go in the inlet side, make sure that it's in there. And this one is our outlet side. And you see how this one, the Allen side is on this side, and the uh, bolt the nut is on this side, so that one is the opposite of the one that we disassembled. That is our exhaust valve, so that goes in this one. Each of these is a different size. Now the reason for that is because the one valve sits in there essentially upside down, because you have one going in, one going out, so they're the opposite direction around. So the smaller one, in this case, goes in the intake side, and the taller one goes in the exhaust. Once your bolts are in and started and everything, torque them down to the spec, which for these is 10 foot-pounds. Torque them to that, and you're done. These are very, very simple to service. Um, not a lot to them, and you'll grow to love them more and more if you end up buying one of these compressors.